Hey folks, in today's video I continue with the upgrades and modifications of the 3D printer. In the last videos I showed among other things how I equipped the printer with Wi-Fi, and how I turned this, into that, by printing parts like the belt tension stoppers, build play corner guides, tool holders and many of these cable chains for better cable management, all of which can be made using only the 3D printer. In case you missed it, I'll put the links to these videos in the description. In today's video I will show you modifications that require some additional but inexpensive parts. Like these stabilizers for the gentry. And how to attach a cheap webcam without much effort so that I can monitor the printing on my computer and phone. But first a few words about the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay. PCBWay offers a wide variety of different manufacturing processes. Not only can they make you PCBs, but they can also manufacture all kinds of parts through CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrications and even injection molding. You can simply upload your 3D file and immediately see how much it will cost. You have many options to choose how and from which material your part should be made. They even offer metal 3D printing with different materials like aluminum, titanium and even tool steel, which I find very interesting and I definitely will use this for future projects. Now back to the video. We start with the stabilizers for the gentry, which I printed again in marble PLA from Polyterra. And as usual, I'll put the links to the 3D files in the description. I printed these parts with supports and mainly used the default settings of Eligu Cura. Removing the supports was easy and I used a round file to remove the last residue. Then I bought 2 times one meter of these M8 threaded rods. Apart from that, you need 12 M8 nuts and these T-slot nuts in size M4, which I ordered cheaply from AliExpress. I start with the upper bracket, for which this cover must first be removed, and these two screws taken out. The part can then be reattached using the same screws. Now I attach the lower mounting. For this I used M4 screws with a length of 10mm, and some that are 16mm long. So, for each of these parts that are attached to the base of the printer you need two screws of the mentioned lengths and four T-slot nuts. The easiest way to install the T-slot nuts is to arrange them horizontally and then place them in the slot. When the screws are tightened, the nuts automatically turn to the vertical position and hold the part in place. Then I measured the threaded rod and sawed it to the right length, which in my case was 49 centimeters. And after that I used a file to clean the cut surface. The easiest way to mount the bar is with a screw drill, as the bar does not slip through the holes of the mount, but screws into it. At this point I have inserted two M8 nuts, so that I can tighten them between the brackets later. I then had to screw in the last piece by hand. You can see how the upper part of the printer moves a bit when I do this. After these posts are in place it will be somewhat more sturdy. Finally, add one M8 nut at the top and one at the bottom. On the side with the cable chain, I pushed it all the way back so that there is enough space for the mounting. And here again the same story. You can of course do it by hand, but it will take quite a long time. I had mounted this holder for pliers and a glue stick at the rear right of the printer, which now has to go so that there is enough space for the mounting. And once again the drill is your friend. The last piece by hand and the M8 nuts on it. Now is the time when you fasten all the nuts using a wrench, but be careful not to over tighten them. I didn't mount the stabilizer at the rear left because there wasn't enough space here due to the cable chain bracket. And on the back right side, I only realized after the installation that this part hits the pole when the printer moves all the way up. This restricts the vertical build space to about 23 centimeters. As I only print smaller parts, this is not a problem for me, but I wanted to mention it. The next step is to install the webcam that allows me to monitor the print from my couch. This is the attachment of the webcam that is attached to the printer at the T-slots. 
I chose this mount to match my webcam, which is a very cheap one I ordered from AliExpress. You will see in a moment why exactly this mount fits so well to the camera I chose. I had to remove these two screws and lift the cover slightly to fit it in. Obviously, it would have been better if I had thought of this before attaching the stabilizer, and so I had to do it again. Now I print the links to fix the camera in the right position. In the end I only needed a total of 5 links for my setup. They snap into each other and can be extended as required. To attach the webcam to the mount, I had to print the last link in 95% of the original size to get this satisfying click. The camera cost me 9 bucks and is certainly not high quality, but it is plug and play and to monitor the progress of printing it is all I need. No drivers need to be installed for this camera. It can simply be connected to the USB and then it works. Finally, I attached the cable with cable ties, which also gives the holder a little more stability. I will put a link to this camera in the description in case you want to use the same one. And there you have it. Now the printer runs a webcam and is somewhat more stable. The build volume get a bit smaller, but if that bothers you, you can simply ditch the rear pole and just use the two at the front. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week we'll continue with adjustable belt tensioners, which I badly needed at this point because the belt was already very loose. I will also show you how I print with flexible filament for the first time, and to make sure that it runs smoothly, I printed this filament holder with bearings. And I also show you this neat looking display holder I found. Because after the modification shown today there is no more space on the printer for the display. If you don't want to miss it, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you found the video interesting, I would appreciate a like. And as always, please let me know your opinion in the comments below. Take care and see you next time.